All right. Hello, I'm Lee, and we're going to go through some origins of Easter today. Uh, where did it come from, and why do we celebrate it? Um, I'll tell you my own my own testimony. Uh, 2020, I prayed for the truth and found out I was supposed to keep the Sabbath. And then I started keeping the Sabbath, and then I found out Christmas was pagan, and then I quit Christmas, and then I found out Easter was pagan. Um, this is kind of how how he showed me, and it was a step-by-step -step process. It wasn't all at one time. It was one thing after another. But he did answer my prayer, so that's my testimony. Um, Matthew 28.1 and they celebrate Easter Sunday, Resurrection Day, and the end of the Sabbath. As it be began to dawn toward the first day of the week, so it was still the end of the Sabbath. As it was dawning, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher to the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of Yahweh descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it because they had placed a stone there. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow and for fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. And he prophesied they would change his name and they did. It's in John. It's Yahusha, which was crucified. Or Yeshua. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said, Come see the place where Yahweh or Yahusha lay. So he is not here. See, they came at the end of the Sabbath as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, and he was not there. They celebrate Easter Sunday, Resurrection Day, and he did not rise on Easter Sunday. He was not there there on Sunday when they came he rose on the Sabbath he said he was three days and three nights in the tomb as the son of Jonah in the belly let's see Matthew twelve thirty nine, I think is it. Yeah. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be no sign given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For, as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. All right, so he tells you right there. They celebrate Good Friday. So if he's in the tomb on Friday, Friday, Saturday, risen on Sunday, that's not a full day, and it's not three full nights. But if you look at it, crucified on Wednesday, in the tomb Wednesday night, Thursday, Thursday night, Friday, Friday night, Sabbath, and he rose right after he was crucified like Wednesday, Wednesday evening, he rose on the Sabbath in the evening. And the Sabbath begins at dawn. And it's very clear here that the Jews have it wrong too. It does not start at evening. See? Go here. At the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, the Sabbath ends at dawn. So... Wednesday night, Thursday, Thursday night, Friday, Friday night, Sabbath, Saturday, risen, before it dawned to the first day of the week. John 21, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. See, first day of the week. Sunday, look on your calendar. Sunday. Calendar. 
calendar starts Sunday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, seventh day. Still on your calendar. When it was yet dark, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Yahushua loved and saith unto them, They have taken away Yahushua out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. So, he's gone. He's not there. Same account in John. And so Matthew and, Mar- and, Matthew and John, Mark 16.2, and very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. That's when the day starts. And it even tells you here, let me go back a little bit. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. So this lines up. You can't just take this gospel by itself and say, well, look, the Sabbath was passed. No, it has to line up with other scripture. It's not standalone scripture. Matthew and John tell you exactly when it is. And this tells you exactly when it is, too. Very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun as the Sabbath was ending. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted, you seek Yahushua of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. He is risen. He is not here. He's already gone. Gone. Luke 24, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of Yahushua, Adonai Yahushua, and it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Ask them about that when you go to church today. This is on a, this is on the, the Sunday that they're doing their Easter celebration. If you're watching it later, you can still ask your pastor, Hey, how about all these verses? Because they won't teach you this in church. I had to come out of the church before I even found that out. Jeremiah chapter 16, the Old Testament is not done away with. There's a lot of prophecies that are not fulfilled yet, and you'll see one right here. The word of Yahweh came also unto me, saying, Thou shalt not take thee a wife, neither shalt thou have sons or daughters in this place. For thus saith Yahweh, Yahweh concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place, and concerning their mothers that bear them, and concerning their fathers that begot them in this land, they shall die of grievous death. Death they shall not be lamented, neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth. They shall be consumed by the sword and by famine, and their carcasses shall be meat of the, for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. For thus saith Yahuwah, Enter not into the house of mourning, neither go to lament nor bemoan them, for I have taken away my peace from this people, saith Yah- Yahuwah, even loving kindness and mercies. And uh, the reason I pl- replaced the name is it's found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and they even tell you in some translations that they've replaced the name all through the scripture. At the, at the very beginning of the translation, they tell you they've replaced it with Lord and God. So all I do is stick it back in there. Um. Both the great and the small shall die in this land. They shall not be buried, neither shall men lament for them, nor cut themselves, nor make themselves bald for them. That's what they used to do for the dead. And some people still do tattoos for the dead. Not good. Neither shall men tear themselves for them in mourning to comfort them for the dead. Neither shall men give them the cup of consolation to drink for their father or for their mother. Thou shalt not 
also go into the house feasting to sit with them to eat and to drink. For thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, Behold, I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes and in your ways the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of bridegroom and the voice of the bride. And it shall come to pass that when thou shalt show this people all these words, and they shall say unto thee, Wherefore hath Yahuwah pronounced all this great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity? Iniquity in the Greek, you go back in the Strong's Concordance, is lawlessness. And uh, he said he's going to tell them, they, they're going to come to him and say, we've cast out demons and we've, we've done all these wonderful works in your name. And he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, lawlessness. Or what is our sin? First John 3, 4, transgression of the law that we have committed against Yahuwah, our Elohim. So that's what the people are going to say because the church doesn't teach them the truth. Then shalt thou say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, saith Yahuwah, and have walked after other gods, and and served them, and have worshipped them, and forsaken me, and have not kept my law. So he tells you right there. There's your definition. I give it to you up here. He give it to you down here. It Same thing. It goes together. And you have done worse than your fathers, for behold, you walk every one after the imagination of his evil heart, that you may not hearken unto me. That's what the church does, where uh, we do all these uh, these good works, you know, feeding the poor, and you know, going on mission trips, and doing all this other stuff, which is a, it's still a good thing, but they don't hearken to his commandments. See, he tells you what to do, they don't do it. Therefore will I cast you out of this land into a land that you know not, neither ye nor your fathers, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night, or I will not show you favor. So he he's casting he's casting them out. This happened before and it's happening again. See? It's happened before and it's happening again. Therefore behold the days come, saith Yahuwah, that it shall no more be said. The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. So this is transitioning to the future. But the Lord liveth that brought the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the land, lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So he's going to bring them out. He's, he dispersed them. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and... They shall fish them, and after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill, and out of the holes in the rocks. For mine eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. So this is future here. Iniquity, lawlessness. And first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. Lawlessness. Because they have defiled my land, they have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. O Lord, my strength and my fortress, Yahuwah, and my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth, and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. That's what I was trying to get to there. See, the church says we're Gentiles. Ephesians 2 and Romans 11 says if you're if you're part of Israel and you have the holy covenants of promise you you're not a Gentile you're not a Jew you're Israel so it says here the Gentiles are going to come from the ends of the earth and say surely our fathers have inherited lies Easter Christmas Sun God Day vanity and things wherein there's no profit so they're going to do that people there's people that are not going to know until he comes shall a man make gods unto himself and they are no gods therefore behold i will this once cause them to know and i will cause them to know my hand and my might and they shall know that my name is yahuwah he's also going to show them his name second esther's chapter five this tells you that the truth is going to be hidden people are like oh, the whole church can't be deceived 
Well, the, if you read the scriptures and you believe him, he tells you it's going to be deceived. Second Ezra chapter 5, Nevertheless, as coming the tokens, behold, the days shall come, that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in a great number. And this was written about 400 B.C. It was included in the 1611 King James Version before they removed it in the late 1800s. And uh, this is the, and the way of truth shall be hidden in the land barren of faith. See, faith, they, it says in Hebrews chapter 4, you don't enter the uh, Sabbath, you're, you don't have faith. So it's, see, iniquity, oops, close it, get off there. Iniquity, I'll show you that in a minute. But iniquity, lawlessness shall be increased above that which thou now seest and that which thou hast heard long ago. In the land that thou seest now to have root, shall thou be see wasted suddenly. So, he tells you in, I say, let me go over here. Hebrews chapter 5. Chapter 4. Chapter 4. He says, Rest to the people. Uh, yeah, see. For he that is entered into his rest has also ceased from his one work, says Yahuwah did from his, the seventh day. See, and he tells you. The seventh day. See? He rested from his works, the seventh day. And they let us labor, therefore, to enter that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. No faith. Second Ezra chapter 5. Quit popping up. The land shall be barren of faith. So there's no faith because nobody's doing what they're supposed to do. You got to have faith to keep the commandments. If you don't have faith, you don't keep them. You got to believe what he said. All right. So that's enough uh, showing you scripture to back it up. I'm going to go over here. This is courtesy of Lou White. He's got a YouTube channel. Go over there and say hello to him. He's done the research. He's given permission for everybody to share it. So, this is the Torah Institute, fossilizedcustoms.com. I'm going to add that in the description here. So, paste that. Update. And you can go to the website yourself and look at it. You can go over to Lou Watts YouTube channel. He's probably done a video on this. I hadn't seen it, but Easter Mother Earth Ishtar, a name adopted from pagans. The phonology sound of this word reveals the truth for us. Many deny that the phonology is, is any proof, but they are in denial for a good reason. They will lose credibility in the eyes of their followers. A, a rose by any other name is still a rose. Who is Easter? She is Gaia, Ashtaroth, Ishtar, Artemis, Venus, Aphrodite, Semiramis, Nature, Great Mother Frigga, Libertus, East, Easter, Oyster, Durga, Hathar, Queen of Heaven, Regina, Coley, Queen of Heaven, Isis, Terra, Ashtaroth, uh, Aphrodite, Venus, Libertus, Mother of Harlots, Ishtar, Durga, Diana, Isabel, Frigga, Gaia, Easter... All these names. And also, you wonder, okay, why are they all different names? Well, in the flood, or no, at the Tower of Babel, to try to help people understand, Genesis 11, 9, therefore is the name of it called Babel, that's the Tower of Babel, because there, Yahuwah did confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did Yahuwah scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. And that's when they were building the city, or the tower. Confound their language. Yeah, let me, let me go back here. Sorry. Let's see. All right. And the whole earth was one language and one speech. 
And it came, it's Genesis 11. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. They said one to another, Go, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us, us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And Yahuwah came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men buildeth. And Yahuwah said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So Yahuwah scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore the name of it is called Babel. Okay. So you see all these different names are for different cultures, but it's the same worship. The same pagan goddess. How to identify the mother of harlots? Anyone can turn away from the delusional religious behavior they are trapped in by the power of Yahushua's spirit. I prayed for the truth in 2020, and he showed me the truth. I either have faith and believe that he answered my prayer, or I say, oh, maybe it's something else. That delusional religious behavior is the mother of harlots. The mother of harlots is a hybrid Mongol. How can we identify the mother of harlots? Artemis, Diana of Ephesus, Great Mother Guy, Ishtar, Easter, excerpt from the book Fossilized Customs. This word, let's see, pages 12 through 14, this word has been adopted for pagans as an attempt to enculturate. Let me show you this here. Now, I'll preface this with, I already knew the truth before I found Lou on YouTube. Okay. So, I didn't get it from Lou. I got it from praying. But Lou's got a book here. This is the book. Fossilized Customs. You can get it on Amazon. That'll that'll help you out. Um, it's a good book. I don't agree with everything in it, but... Uh, I don't think anybody agrees on everything 100%. So, but... This is from the book here, Fossilized Customs. This word has been adopted from pagans as an attempt to enculturate by syncretism a behavior that is an absolute abomination. If you recognize Halloween for what it is, then this will be no different after the, you learn the truth. Easter was already one of the two biggest celebrations observed by pagans long before Christianity came along. It is my belief that when this is exposed, it will fulfill prophecies of revelation 18 go read it now babylon is still with us but it is going to fall easter was celebrate celebrated by the assyrians the phoenicians and the philistines goliath no doubt had an easter basket you should look up easter in a webster's dictionary and do further research in other sources this festival involved the rites of spring near the equinox of venus when pagans believed the earth mother was impregnated by the sun they engaged in ritual sex acts and used symbols of fertility like eggs, rabbits, and hot cross buns. Now, what does this have to do with the Son of God coming to the earth and dying a sacrifice for our sins? Eggs? Rabbits? Mm -mm. Fertility. That's all it is. And you can ask your local witch and she'll tell you the same thing. They celebrate Easter. Witchcraft. The Babylonian symbol for the female was and is a circle with a crux beneath it. The round cakes were baked for the Queen of Heaven, Regina Lee, and the Great Mother Magna Mater, a.k.a. Nature, with the cross symbol indicating the female. The cross also indicated the equinox when the Earth's orbit crossed the celestial equator. This must sound so wild you may think I'm a heretic, but by the end of this you will be very glad to have acquired the truth. That uh, that reminds me. Let's see. That reminds me. I gotta look this up right quick, Queen. Right. 
That reminds me. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 7. Let's see. That right there. And before anybody says it, well, it says Easter in our Bible. I'm going to squash that right quick here. Let's see. All right. All right. We're going to finish reading here, and then I got a couple other things to read there. You may think I'm a heretic. Well, you're in good company if they think you're a heretic, Lou, because they thought Paul was a heretic, too. Acts 24, 14, but I confess unto thee that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I, the God of my fathers, believing all things that are written in the law and the prophets. So Paul believed everything in the law of the prophets. And they called him a heretic. So you're in good company. This book will also will only shatter myths, not the rock of truth. To ensure a prosperous growing season, pagans rolled eggs decorated with bright colors of spring on their fields, hoping to imbue fertility. These eggs were then hidden from evil spirits in rabbits' nests, another symbol of fertility. The U.S. federal government does this very thing on the White House lawn every year on Easter Sunday. There's your first clue. Sun day. Sun worship. Easter is the name of the Babylonian mother of her harlots. Revelation 17 and her image stands as the sun goddess Lady Liberty in New York Harbor. This Colossus statue even has the tower headpiece as seen, as seen worn by Artemis. Anybody can go and look this up for themselves. Most, a lot of people won't believe this because they're stuck in their, uh, their traditions. They don't want to let go of their traditions. Well, we've done this our whole life. You know, we, we grew up doing this. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Nobody's getting hurt. Um, he's more important. The Hebrew Tanakh Old Testament calls her Asherah. The seven horns or sun rays should be a strong indication of her true identity. Her emblem is the flower of the lily, seen illustrated with her on this page. In American society, the Easter Seal Society, uses the fleur de lis, French flower of the lily, as their logo, and they have no religious affiliations whatsoever. At the Statue of Liberty, there is a plaque dedicating the image to the Earth Mother Ishtar. Most churches, uh, circus in the Latin, kirch, is the word Tyndale used for a pagan temple. Decorate with the lilies of, on Easter morning instead of inheriting truth, they inherited Babel's witchery. If we study history as a people, places, and dates without comprehending why things occurred as they did, then everything is unorganized. It's a junk pile. When you assemble it correctly, it all fits together perfectly, clarifying the path we walk on. Satan disguises himself. He is quite often female. We know he was behind Nimrod as Moloch, Baal, Mithras, and so on, but he is also Ishtar. Sunday is his diversion. It's a lie. I refer to Easter Sunday as Beaster Sunday. <laughs> we we don't have to wait for the beast is here right now, a.k.a. the reign of Babel. The behavior and appointments found in the writings are completely abandoned, excused, and ignored. But you say the word Easter is in my King James Version. That's what I was going to share. Translations are not inspired and errors exist by the tens of thousands in many translations. The word in the Greek that underlines the word Easter in the KJV is Pascha, and it means Passover, from the Hebrew word Pasach. Pascha is correctly translated 28 times in the KJV as Passover, but in one place it is mistranslated as Easter. All scholars admit that this is an error in translation, and it appears only once. At Acts 12.4, verse 3 is discussing unleavened bread. Luke, who wrote almost 40% of the Mashian writings, New Testament, didn't put it there as Easter. The KJV is the only one with this error since translators corrected it in all others. There was a previous English translation made by the Catholic priest John Wycliffe during the 14th century. Wycliffe's influences came from the Latin Vulgate, and in his day, the word Esther and Pascha were thought to be synonymous for the same thing. Luther's version used the word Oster. 
These men had no idea. Ostera, Easter, Esther, Ishtar, Eoster, Eostre, and so on were references to the earth mother adopted from the pagan worship of the host of heaven. And that's what I was going to share here. That's why I pulled it up. And when he had, Acts 12, 4, when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Yeah, right. They were keeping Easter. Let's check this out. So here's the Maser- the uh, Greek text that the New Testament's translated out of. Go down here to Easter. Do, 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 do. Easter. Hey, look, it's in my Bible. Pascha. Oh, not G 3957. The word is Pascha. What does Pascha mean? It is translated 28 times in the scriptures as Passover, and they stuck it in here this one time as Easter. Mm-hmm. The Paschal biblical usage, the Paschal sacrifice, which was accustomed to be offered for the people's deliverance of old from Egypt. The Paschal lamb. The Paschal supper. The Passover feast, the feast of Passover. Oh, okay. So they changed it to Easter. Why would they do that? Oh, they want everybody to celebrate the pagan holiday. That's why. There we go. So that's what he's talking about. Pagan religions through time paralleled each other, carrying the sun, earth mother, and child model from Babylon to Media Persia, Phoenicia, Egypt, Greece, Rome, and Celts, the Medes, cooked the mythology into Zoroastrianism, producing the magician priest called Magi. They worshipped Ahura, Heoma, Ohemarmazd as their trinity. We'll survey them all under trinities later. The Greeks, Zeus, was their sun deity, whose mother was Lydia, shown riding a swan. Notice her headpiece, very much like Lady Liberty. The Britannica Encyclopedia, 1934, states... Easter, Ostera, or Estra, was the goddess of spring in the religion of ancient Angles and Saxons. Every April, a festival was celebrated in her honor. With the beginnings of Christianity, the old gods were put aside. From then on, the festival was celebrated in honor of the resurrection of the Messiah, but was still known as Easter after the old goddess. So when you can look it up, it's well documented in history that Rome blended with the church the ecclesia and they took their pagan stuff and blended it all together so when you worship uh yeah well lou's got it right here in contrast the creator says break down their altars smash their sacred stones and burn their asherah easter poles christmas trees cut down their idols of their gods and wipe out their names from those places you must not worship yahuwah your Elohim in their way. Deuteronomy 12. Have you ever wondered what happened? So you don't do. If they blend it with pagan stuff. It's like making the golden calf. They made the golden calf. And he was going to wipe them out. Have you ever wondered what happened? The pagan customs were adopted slowly. After the first Talmudim. Disciples not serene fell asleep. As we read the letter of the Polycrates. To the elder in Rome. The transformation of paganism. Truth or tradition, the transformation of paganism. Acts 18 mentions the early expulsions of Torah guarding Yehudim from the city of Rome by Emperor Claudius a few years prior to the destruction of Jerusalem. The second century writings of Polycarp of Smyrna reveal in a letter to Victor, a fellow elder in Rome, discouraging the observance of Easter and encouraging Passover instead. Polycrates emphatically stated that he was following the tradition passed down to him. We observe the exact day, neither adding nor taking away, for in Asia also great lights have fallen asleep, which shall rise again on the day of the Master's coming. All these observe the 14th day of Passover according to the Besorah, deviating in no respect but following the rule of belief. And I also, Polycrates, the least of you all, do according to the tradition of my relatives, some of whom I have closely followed. For seven of my relatives were bishops, and I am the eighth. And my relatives always observe the day when the 
people put away the leaven. That's unleavened bread. That's part of Passover, not Easter. Emperor Theodosius, A.D. 78-398, officially forced Constantine's Catholicism, the state religion of the Roman Empire, and made church membership compulsory. The forced conversions filled the assemblies with unregenerate regenerate pagans while continuing to tax those who observed other beliefs. Download a tacked article with more details on how the Fiscus Judaeus, a Roman tax on Torah observers, slowly transformed the assemblies planted by the first Nazarene disciples into steeple-building pagans observed, observing Sunday and eating swine. And he also said, eat... Might as well go through that. Matthew 26. I'll pull that up too. Pagans were absorbed into Christianity. It was the policy to accept everything they were accustomed to celebrating. Let's hear it directly from the Catholic organization itself. The Catholic Cardinal John Henry Newman's book, The Essay on the Development of Christian Doctrine, published in 1878, states in Chapter 8. And Lou, thank you for all this wonderful research. The rulers of the church from early times were prepared, should the occasion arise, to adopt, to imitate, or to sanctify the existing rites and customs of the population as well as the philosophy of the educated class. The use of temples and those dedicated to particular saints and or ornamented on occasion with branches of trees, wreaths, incense, lamps, candles, votive offerings on recovering from illnesses, holy water, holy days, and seasons, the entire church calendar, use of calendars, Possessions, blessings on the field, sacerdotal vestments, the ring in marriage, chants, the Kyrie Ellison, are all of pagan origin and sanctified by, <clears throat> by adoption into the church. Well, the Protestants, when they broke away from Rome, they took the pagan traditions of Rome that they had had in the Catholic Church and they brought them over. They brought Sun God Day over. They brought Christmas over. They brought Easter over. There you have it. But you may ask if Easter was a pagan festival celebrating the impregnation of Mother Earth, how did it get mixed up with Christianity? Christianity's pagan connection started with one man more than any other in 325 CE, the Roman Emperor Constantine. So he goes into that. I conveyed what is now called the Nicene Council. I convened what is now the Nicene Council, gathering 220 elders, bishops together, in order to unify basic doctrines, teachings, and establish common practices. This universalizing produced the Roman Catholic Church. The Latin word Catholic means universal. There was no Catholic on the planet prior to this council. The only council mentioned in the writings conducted by the first Nazarenes, Nazarenes is mentioned in Acts 15, the purpose of which was to determine how to accommodate Gentile converts who were turning to the true creator. The only topic, circumcision, and since immersion in the name and receiving the spirit into your heart is our circumcision, it was decided that physical circumcision was not necessary. This is a very important beginning text to be understood by all adult male Gentiles. Constantine's council sought to institute new tolerances for pagan patterns and outlaw the patterns that the Savior lived by and taught. He had already proclaimed Sunday as a day of rest dedicated to the sun, 321 A.D. And now it came, it came time to syncretize more paganism. By not repenting and turning away from elementary foolishness, it was simpler to just absorb the behavior Political and religious control is a slippery thing. So by keeping the pagan rituals in place, control was maintained with a minimal effort. Truth was twisted by the spin doctors, so the opposite of truth became our custom. Rather than make 99% of the people conform to a totally new behavior, it was easier to just exterminate the 1% and put a scriptural spin on the pagan customs. This is what overwhelmed all of our ancestors being taught these things as young children. Paganism has always been highly skilled at wrapping dissimilar things together, making things appear one way on the surface, surface, and making the loosely understood things shrouded in what they call the mysteries of the faith. And why did he say that? He tells you that the... Where's that? That's not it. John 8, 44. 
You have your father the devil, lust your father do, he is a murderer from the beginning, abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Making things appear one way on the surface and making loosely understood things shrouded in what they call mysteries of the faith. So, the devil and his lies. In order to blend practices into universal Catholic behavior, the real Sabbath was outlawed along with Passover and other annual Jewish observances. This was a prophecy revealed to Daniel, and the prophecy for beasts or kingdoms would arise, which are clearly Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, and Rome. At Daniel 7.25, the fourth beast is clearly described. The fourth beast is the fourth kingdom that will appear on the earth, Rome. It will be different from all the other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are ten kings who will come from this kingdom. Caesars. Julius Caesar up to Constantine. After them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. Constantine fused the sun worshippers with the Nazarene writings and was not of the family name Caesar. He will subdue three kings. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his saints, Kodeshim, those set apart, especially the Hebrew people, and try to change the set times and the law. Scripture is a pattern for our living in peace, guiding us with its law. The changing of set times or seasonal appointments decreed in Deuteronomy 16 and Leviticus 23 were wiped out and replaced with pagan observances imposed by Constantine. And they did change times and laws. 100% correct. Easter bunnies, huh? Easter harlot. The Easter harlot's Babylonian roots. Ishtar Easter promotes Nimrod's rebellion against Yahuwah. Her effigies portray sun worship with overtones of freedom and liberty. She is the harlot of Babel and a symbol of lawlessness. Christian teachers are scrambling to recover from what could be the greatest wardrobe malfunction for the mother of harlots. It's the connection between the name Ishtar and Easter. It looks like a man's face there, kind of. In about 1985, I began to study scripture as a theological archaeologist, this Lou. Just below the surface of every familiar term and custom, there was a filthy core hiding behind a candy coating. These discoveries inspired the book, Fossilized Customs. If you haven't read his book by Lou White, very good book, Fossilized Customs. The author, Alexander Hislop, was also a theological archaeologist whose eyes were open to the connection between Nimrod's reign and the fourth beast, Rome's magisterium. He drew the connection between the words Easter and Ishtar, yet his critics claimed that phonetics, the sound of words, is a worthless proof. When proper names are concerned, is that really the case, or is the proof too overwhelming to face for those who risk losing their position in a false teaching authority? The Anglican Catholic KJV is the only English translation using the word Easter. Yeah, imagine if a pastor got up and started preaching this. And the whole congregation might walk out. The Hebrew term Pesach was transliterated, not translated, into the Greek script 29 times as Pascha. The KJV's use of the word Easter in Acts 12 4 defies logic, as we saw. Since if it could be justified in one instance, then why not all 29 instances? The dirty little secret is that this Catholic tradition overwhelmed the translators and now everyone is claiming the meaning behind the word Easter is still clean. They are trying to put a new crust over it with claims that it means dawn, still based an, based another pagan deity of the dawn, Aurora. Magicians use misdirection to deceive and Jesuits use cause a tree in the same way. I predicted that when the truth of the term Easter was made known across the world that it would awaken millions from their slumber. Now it's beginning to happen, and Christian pastors are posting their explanations as fast as they can to reduce the damage to their authority. The Easter harlot has had a major wardrobe malfunction, and the world is going to get a good look at it. As usual, they are playing on the ignorance of their followers, using translation as a universal equivocation device. They are turning to meanings based on Anglo-Saxon, German, Greek, and Latin, Ishtar, Easter, Istre, Estre, Ostern and many others have no connection with Yahushua's language or his resurrection, but they do relate to Ahura, Aphrodite, Diana, Libertus, Ashtoreth, Durga, and other terms for the mother goddess worshipped by witches. Other wardrobe malfunctions are to come. The worship of the host of heaven by means of Babel's zodiac or vows to the queen of heaven through every birthday cake. 
are being shown to have nothing to do with Yahushua's behavior. Yahushua is cleansed from cleansing the filth from his bride in a worldwide behavior revolution. Here is recent posting that basically says, move along, there's nothing to see here. Constantine, the father of Christianity, becomes part of their explanation. Easter question posted at Jesus.org. Oh, pretty close to the end. Our English word Passover, happily in sound and sense, almost corresponds to the Hebrew Pasach, of which is a translation. Galatian, Exodus 12, 27, the Greek Pascha, formed from the Hebrew, is the name of the Jewish festival applied invariably in the primitive church to designate the festival of Yahushua's resurrection, which took place at the time of the Passover. Our word Easter is of Saxon origin and of precisely the same import with its German cognate Ostern. The later is derived from the old Teutonic form of Ophirstian. O first it hung, which means resurrection. The name Easter is undoubtedly preferable to Pascha or Passover, but the latter was the primitive name. The word Easter is of Saxon origin. The name is Easter, the goddess of spring, in whom honor sacrifices were offered about Passover time each year. By the 8th century, Anglo-Saxons had adopted the name to designate the celebration of the Messiah's resurrection. From an ecclesiastical history to the twelfth year of the reign of Constantine, fourth edition, trans Christian F. Cruz, London, Oxford University Press, 1847. Did the Jesus.org explanation work for you? Equivocation is employed here to defend the error. The misdirection is in their translation of the German word of first in, which does doesn't mean resurrection. It is a word that refers to springtime and means to resuscitate. It's time to wake up now and be restored to favor with Yahuwah. There's uh, some more links to look at. And all right, so we're going to go over here. That's the end of Lou's. Thank you, Lou. Great research. We're going to look at Jeremiah chapter 7. The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahuwah saying, Stand in the gate of Yahuwah's house and proclaim there the word and say hear the word of Yahuwah all ye of Judah that enter in at these gates to worship Yahuwah thus saith Yahuwah of hosts the Elohim of Israel amend your ways and your doings and I will cause you to dwell in this place trust you not in lying words saying the temple of Yahuwah the temple of Yahuwah the temple of Yahuwah are these for if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doing, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, then I will cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will you steal and murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and burn incense to Baal and walk after other gods whom you know not? And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say we are delivered to do these abominations. Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith Yahuwah. But go ye now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name as at the first, and see what I did for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because you have done all these works, saith Yahuwah, and I spake unto you, rising up early in speaking, but you heard me not. And call, I called you, but you answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein you trust, and unto the place which I gave you, and to your fathers, as I have done to Shallow. And I will cast you out of my side, as I cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry or prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem? This is the, the key point here. The children gather wood and the fathers kindle fire and the women knead their dough and m to make cakes for the queen of heaven. What we just see in Lou's writing? Queen of heaven. To pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may pr provoke me to anger. Now if it provokes him to anger in the Old Testament, did he change? Oh, now it's okay? No. Do they provoke me with anger, saith Yahuwah? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast and upon trees of the field and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, put your burnt offerings unto your sacrifices and eat flesh. 
For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your Elohim, and you shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. See, that's Deuteronomy 5 when he, he gave him the Ten Commandments and he added no more. He didn't add the, sac- the offerings and sacrifices. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked after the counsels and the imagination of their, their evil heart, and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, but they will not hearken unto thee. Thou shalt call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of Yahuwah, thy Elohim, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. So we're back. We're right back there again. Cut off thine hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take up lamentation on high places. For Yahuwah hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith Yahuwah. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnon, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of the slaughter. For they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place, and the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. And he's going to do the same thing again. Wake up, people. Slain from one end of earth to the other. If I can find it in here. Jeremiah twenty five thirty three and the slain of Yahuwah shall be on that day from one end of one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth they shall not be lamented neither gathered nor buried they shall be as dung upon the ground. And this is after the flood. What's he talking about? Has that happened again? No. It's coming up. So repent. And I I kept Easter for years. I didn't know, but when I found out, I said okay. Not doing Easter no more. Simple. Father, please forgive me for doing these this pagan junk. Don't do it no more. He knows we didn't know. Uh, Matthew chapter twenty six, and it came to pass when Yahushua had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of Passover, and the Son of Man is be- is betrayed to be crucified. So this Yahushua speaking. Red letters. Then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas and consulted that they might take Yahushua by subtly and kill him. But they said, Not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Yahushua was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when the disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Yahushua understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For you have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, There shall also this, that this woman hath done, be told for a memorial of her. And this being told right now. He is correct. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest, and said unto them, What will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Yahushua, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? So what's he doing? All right, all right, Master, where are we going to eat the Passover at? 
And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand, I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Yahushua had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. So he told them, We're doing the Passover. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. And this is, most people see this, but they don't see the other details. Not everybody, just most. I didn't see the other details until later. And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Master, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Yahushua took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. So that's the unleavened bread of the Passover. And he took, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So he's going to do the Passover again, in the, the feast in the kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So they kept, they kept the Passover, not Easter. Passover. So, all right. Well, hopefully that was helpful and a blessing to somebody. And uh, 